Morning all. I had a really dramatic match last night. Um, okay, so uh, we were playing Hamel Hampstead, the final game of the season in the Hertfordshire League. So we're sitting on Division 1 in um, pole position. We just needed to win last night the match, which unfortunately, uh, so far we haven't done. It's looking very unlikely to win the match. Uh, hopefully we can just draw the match. Um, at the moment the score is uh, two all with one game uh, to, to play on. So my game was one of the first finished, uh, first finish, it was actually the first finish and um, it's 6.30 here in the morning, uh, I didn't really sleep that well. Although I won this game it's what happened after which is kind of um, not so great and quite annoying. Because uh, we haven't won this league since um, apparently about 1967, so it would have been nice to have won the league for the club, but um, it's looking far less likely now. So anyway, let's look at my game. Uh, Steve Law playing white played e4. I played my pet line of the French defence. Got to play that here. Goes off to knight c3, knight f6. We have uh, the burn line, Morozovic uh, variation. Wrong setting. The old um, double pawns, getting that potential pressure on the G file. Uh, later, I'm going to play uh, bishop on, on that diagonal to get pressure there. He plays knight f3. After b6, he plays bishop b5 check. Maybe uh, black wants to play c6 anyway, so maybe bishop c4 is a little bit better than bishop b5 check. Uh, he actually puts the bishop though on d3, not c4. Which I found a bit strange. Maybe uh, later there's a possibility of c5, c4 with the bishop eyeing e4. That would be more effective, maybe. But um, if white plays this plan of queen e2, it doesn't really matter if the bishop's on c4 or not. If queen e2, castle queenside, and later bishop a6, if, if black's going to castle um, queenside, then that will get rid of the two bishops. And that will be fine as well. But um, he played um, actually here queen d2. Uh, so there's going to be no battery to play bishop a6 later. Instead queen d2, I thought maybe there's um, an idea of queen h6, maybe even cheekily trying to win a pawn quickly. Um, queen c7, let's check this with engine actually. If if he did go pawn hunting here with queen h6, I was thinking I was going to give up this h7 pawn. Uh, so say knight d7, queen g7. Rook f8, yeah, so he takes the pawn, say. Here, I, I mean, I personally assess this as okay for black, and actually Houdini is uh, giving it as okay for, for black, sorry, black to move here. Uh, so in this position, f5, chase the knight back, knight can't use g5. Now c5, and apparently black's okay, for example, like this. Check knight e5. So even though the h7 pawn is gone, it's um, quite a bit of compensation here. Bishop f6. Maybe this diagonal is also pretty useful. So here, black's slightly better apparently. Um, I didn't mind that. Even even if say queens come off, actually, let's just follow that a bit more. Okay, queens don't have to come off actually. Queen a4. The dark square bishop looks pretty powerful here, and there's adequate. There seems adequate compensation, but actually both bishops are really cool. So he didn't go pawn hunting. Uh, so so I'm wondering about the differences. You know, queen e2 to, to d2. Um, the differences, but um, he castled, which uh, so I play knight d7, knowing now that I don't have to lose the h pawn. If if he plays like this now, I can just uh, I can protect the pawn if nothing else. I can. Just protect with like this. That's fine. Uh, but he didn't do that. He um, he just after knight d7, he plays king b1. Although c4 and d5. So here we have like, the instructive theme of the game about the effectiveness of uh, strategic breaks. It's interesting because um, during the game I fought uh, when I played it, it was effective, but it seems uh, not necessarily the case. If White had played the most accurate uh, continuation, um, as we're about to see, so the thematic break for White um, 
usually occurs, like in the Nigel Short Simul game that I had, which I'll I'll put a link to in the video. I'll reply to that game. Um, usually the thematic break was after like losing this bishop, then c4 d5. So that would rupture Black's pawn structure. For example, taking and then Black's left with horrible uh, pawn structure everywhere. Uh, so c4 d5 also um, opens up the c file potentially, and all sorts of nasties really. Um, and that's the one he's playing for. Okay, so rook h e one. I thought h five just to stop potential g four um, might be useful to play this and to to make sure the queen hasn't got h six. So h four king b eight now. So I'm preparing for my c five to be able to respond uh, to c four. The thing is here, this is quite interesting. Um, I try and make this c five more effective because first. I can I can weaken the diagonal a bit with rook g8. The interesting question here is: uh, Does white have to play g3? Could could white um, maybe defend that pawn in another way? Let's have a quick look with an engine here. Ah, oh, not responding. Cancel. Ah, oh, engine load error. I've already got Houdini on. That's why. Sorry. Um. So new variation here. Oh, there'll be C five here will be quite effective apparently. Now I wonder why. So say takes knight takes knight takes bishop takes. I suppose this is unpleasant pressure on f three and g two. Like queen f four here. And this starts to get a bit horrible. So in this position f five take and f2 is weak so I guess that's why white doesn't really want to uh, allow that pressure so he plays actually um, a good move then which the engine agrees with uh, g3 and I, I really thought this was effective uh, last night and in post-mortem this next move which I thought was um, so apparently black is better doing uh, a waiting move and I've had this kind of position before in post-mortem analysis with engines, and um, I think that was that was the answer before a waiting move of a rook in this sort of position. Just wait for White to play d5, hold steady. Uh, so how could that be achieved? Say uh, rook h8. And now d5. I guess the c5 and e5 squares they light up here. But c takes. Oh, in fact, I could just take here. There's no problem there. Uh, knight e5. There's no problem with knight b5. Queen c6. No problem with rook c1. Wow, bishop e4. There's, there's murderous tactics here. So, um, so I guess the answer is holding steady. But I played uh, in this position um, after g3. I played c5 because that was the whole idea of weakening the diagonal first to play this. But apparently, um, white has a very good continuation here. Uh, he played bad continuation, but actually, there's a temporary pawn sack d5. Uh, let's have a look at d5, which does a few things. Um, so the variation I had earlier goes like this. So takes, and now not some um, cd. I think that would be hopeless because bishop d5, and there's nothing uh, for white here. So knight g5, the bishop's possessing f7. In fact, so just just take. Uh, in fact, f3 will be uh, munchable here, so that that will be a total disaster. But the clever thing White can do here in this position, instead of the recapture, is knight c3, and this seems to leave Black in trouble. Well, the bishops and pre for a start. So d4. Okay, so knight b5 hitting the queen, and now. Again, f f frees on the fire, but knight f takes d4, and then rook takes leaves white better. Uh, so say knight e5, rook e1. But white's uh, doing doing fine here apparently. Um, I didn't miss this continuation. This this idea of uh, the temporary pawn sack and then knight c3. Very interesting. Uh, well, it is exposing the attack on on the bishop. And also this knight b5 and queen f4s might be handy if the queen's not here 
for that diagonal to be sensitive. Um, so d5, yeah, it seems to be a very interesting move. d5 here. So, so much for the thematic break c5. It seems also there's a horrendous variation which um, I checked out. Uh, which goes like knight e5. So in this position, um, even if black wins a pawn now, so three, four, five, six, three, four, five. Look at all these pawns on dark squares, and in particular, look at the light square weaknesses. And uh, queen e2 now hits h5 here, as well as preparing um, bishop e4. Uh, so say bishop e4. This would be horrendous. This position because now there's um. There's a nasty threat of queen e4. That the light squares are real, really bad. This bishop's like hemmed in by its own uh, pawn colours. Um, so in this position, uh, say check uh, king c1. Is that really bad, king a1? Oh, king a1 is not so good. Okay, so it requires a lot of precision. This position, but say king c1 then. Rook d8 takes. The opposite colour bishops are kind of dangerous. Ah, oh, queen of three. So just uh, getting this pawn here, and white will be slightly better. M m maybe, maybe it's still drawable after all, all that. So it just shows anyway. D5 is potentially playable <laughs> with takes and knight c3, even though uh, there's a potential liability here on a three. Um, but he plays this uh, move, which really. Um, Gives me the advantage now. I just take on d4, and I've got access now to e5 and c5. So I just use that access. I play actually not this poxy move, which I was thinking about, which I don't think is that good now. Um, a6, although it would prevent um, knight b5, it's giving white a move, an extra move. So like f4, and okay, black might still be better here though. Uh, but it's not as good as the game. In the game, I didn't bother with a6. I played knight c5, and there's immediate uh, tactical implications there after knight b5. Like, can I even sack the queen? Is is one question which came to mind here. Um, so I was looking at this for for quite a while. Rook takes, uh, rook takes, and then leaving the queen and pre with bishop takes after knight takes. There's two options there. He takes or bishop d3, but I think both of them fell. So say bishop d3, the most accurate move is not, uh, I think, king a1, but king c1. Let's, I'll show you both. So king c, say king takes here. b4 might not be so hot here. We, we fought because of f5. Apparently the computer move is bishop g6, but what's wrong with f5 threatening um, like mating on the diagonal? I say king b2. And again, this if if White's winning back one of the pieces now, then um, that's fine. Uh, uh, these these pieces are loose. I thought B4 was effective, and I couldn't see an antidote to B4. Uh, and that's actually ultimately why I rejected um, th this this Queen sack idea here. To play after I was thinking Rook D3 for for a while. I thought just uh, this move is much stronger. Queen e5 because it's still got actually the idea now of, of rook d3. So say f4 here, there'll be rook d3. And if say queen takes, there's queen takes e4 here, and that's that's nasty. It's just winning loads of material. That would be a uh, piece up. So uh, queen e5. I was really pleased that I had queen e5 as an option. So it's both c5 and e5. They just light up after that thematic break. But maybe they shouldn't have if White had played that temporary pawn sack d5. So this this is great news. This queen e5, and he goes really downhill now because actually uh, another inaccuracy very soon. Knight c5. I take the queen, and to my delight, he plays rook takes e3. And um, I think best is. Uh, doesn't look right to give up this pawn, but or loosen it. But f takes might be better. So say takes bishop e2. There's always a counter attack on h5, but black will be better there still. But even in this continuation, after queen e3, there's knight a6 check is a, is actually a useful Zuisen jug to get the bishop off 
this diagonal because it's actually very useful in the game continuation now because uh, he just simply took here and of course after takes there's no rook e2 because of bishop f3 so that Zwishan Zug would have been handy to play knight a6 here in this position knight a6 check so um, white just totally collapsed here now with rook take e3 I just take and how does he defend f2 he can't play rook e2 he's, he's losing this now believe it or not I mean such was the power of the thematic break but it shouldn't have been really if white had reacted um, with that temporary pawn sack here it seems now white's pawns are all in these dark squares which I've got the dark square bishop so that's pretty handy so I just snap up f2 snap up g3 now and now actually the most accurate um, continuation would have actually been bishop e4 apparently using that pin um, say king c2 just taking and there's nasty frets now of rook g2 so say takes rook g2 no not rook pardon me not rook g2 in this position just just taking the rook sorry that's the idea just take the rook here um, so but I played this move which is um, also good because uh, it simplifies but his best here I think is just retreat here but then I take on h4 I'm, I'm lots of pawns up two pawns up um, but he didn't play that thankfully um, after bishop e4 he just actually um, resigned to my delight uh, so that gave us the first game, uh, point in the match and it's a five board match so that's that that was in my pet line that that reduced my my nerves etc um, oh I've just been recording over there sorry uh, let's put the recording error over there back Whoa. Uh that should be a bit neater okay so let's let's review that game um, so French defense my favorite like pet line and um, so basically the key thing is even with Queen d2 it seems um, white can still play uh, for c4 and d5 even without giving uh, even without exchanging off this piece it seems this this formatic idea is still powerful so again um, c5 so what does c5 actually suffer from it's putting the pawn on the same color as the bishop fundamentally so this pawn sacrifice seems to be more justified than the variations uh, so that's very interesting to consider um, the idea of d5 here and then just simply uh, knight c3 very interesting so what would uh, possibly stand better after that but uh, he reacted badly to this break he, he he let me still liberate this bishop using that c5 square this was a bad response I think because now I've got c5 and e5 got loads of pressure on the center so I'm using both c5 and e5 now with queen e5 tactical threats now this this king is a bit of a target in variations and, and now it's just a total like disaster losing material um, so okay um, it's it's what transpired after which which was uh, really unfortunate and uh, which led to a lack of sleep not this particular game uh, Robert Wilmot f on board one he had a fine looking um, position in fact I'm going to try and show you I'll try and do a position set up I'll just save this uh, game to notepad um, let's do a new position set up <clears throat> so uh, I've, so on board one later uh, Rob had this uh, pawn on a6 and bishop was very useful and the knight was kind of awkward um, actually uh, so the bishop was eyeing thing and the, the rook was kind of over here and pawns were kind of like this 
and the king had just gone to h6 and it was a bit like this where um, with, with white to move and white Robert just played like uh, rook c8 or something and um, he shouldn't be losing this position it should be in fact better for white if say let's actually engine check this position I'm not 100% sure this is the exact position um, oh, it's apparently it's about equal here. Uh, managed to lose the game score now. Okay, so this this position, of, if this was it, was about equal check. There's perpetual checks if if nothing else. If White tries too hard, probably gets mated. Oh, G5 probably getting mated. So plays uh, King H1. Rook B2. Hmm. Now there's a threat to Rook F2 and Knight F3, so maybe it wasn't that hot. The position. There's, it's at least a draw. It should have been a draw then. There was enough um, for Black to draw with, with Knight and Rook. It seems if that was near the position. Okay, this is making me feel a bit better that it wasn't a win for White at least. Because uh, cause I'd imagined somehow that if White's actually regaining uh, the pawn here. Um, it's currently pulled down. Uh, then he will be better, uh, but that's not the case. And this this rook and pawn ending is um, is uh, is slightly better. Maybe, maybe this is is probably a draw. It looks like a theoretical draw. So that was board one. So what happens here uh, to cause me uh, a lack of sleep last night? This is the start of uh, the thing which happened after my win. Uh, why did we muck up this position? Um, basically, okay. So Rob had circled, moved thirty, and moved thirty-five, and I thought I was no problem. He's coming up to the first time control, but you know he's only got about. Uh, 40 seconds left to play three remaining moves to get to move 35. I thought there's no problem with that. Surely he, he knows because he circled move 35. Unfortunately, uh, that wasn't the case. Um, and I, I was really concerned. And at one point I went and sat and, and sort of stared in horror for, for, for a few seconds without saying anything. If I had said any, anything to him, uh, like um, it would have been illegal, like I, I think indirect assistance, I think. Um, so I, I I left anyway, to, hoping that you know he played you know free moves quickly, but uh, then you know he doesn't. He he just loses on time, as white. Um, sorry, and that leaves us uh, two one up because Roy uh, uh, Roy Royce on board five. He had actually won as well. So I thought yes, we're going to win the whole league here. Uh, we were two two nil up after Roy had won, and we're going to win this game. But no, we, we lose it on time, forfeit. Thankfully, checking now objectively, you know, Black has enough resources to draw this, I hope. Um, it wasn't like a win thrown away. Uh, but obviously, White's doing absolutely fine. The easiest continuation is just to take uh, the Knight and play Rook C7 with, with a theoretical draw, I believe. So, okay, so we muck up that. And... Um, then there's a really dramatic game. Uh, so David Cutmore on on board four, who um, he he's had a really bad, difficult game with with the black pieces, and I don't really know if I'm going to be able to set that one up. But um, so the drama in that, you know, he's off for the draw, and he asks me, unfortunately. Um, you know what do I think? I can't say look accept the draw, but I can get him the match score. So I asked Mike, can can you tell him the match score, please? And Mike is not immediate like reacting. Um, so a few seconds pass. And I say, look, Mike, please tell him to get the, the match score. So so Mike tells um, David the match score that we're kind of um, t t two one up. So really, you know, it's only a five ball match. If he if he accepts a draw then if Alex draws we would actually win the match uh, but his opponent uh, is coming up to like a minute and a half and um, 
I don't know if I can do any reconstruction. I really like to show the gist of it. Um, I'll try and show you some of the horror, maybe. Uh, so White was doing really well. Uh, basically, he just put a pawn on c5. Um, he had a horrible knight on d5. Uh, rook was torturing the black king. Um, but there were, there were pawns here which were dangerous and the white king was over here. Something like this. Um, <laughs> this is not going to be anywhere near it. Is it? Oh. Uh, I don't, where's, where's the rook? Somewhere. Uh, it's quite important for the rook. So D David is uh, struggling with um, black here, and this is probably nothing uh, like it. Um, he actually played something like um, so. He was in this horrible position with black, faced with um, something like e7. Actually, I think, imagine this is the position, actually, he just played rook a7, stop e7, this is more like it. And then c5, bishop d6, and unfortunately, for some reason he played bishop takes f4, uh, losing a piece, and um, it, it, so it was horrible to watch. Uh, David Cutmore, well, he hasn't lost in Hearts League before for us, so he managed this blundered piece, and, and then um, that was that was it. So so we were back at uh, two all at this stage, uh, with Alex um, the final game to go. And um, so, so <laughs> five board match. Um, this is therapy. So the fifth board and Alex is also casual on the clock. I thought, what is this? What is it with the team tonight? Yeah, he's going to lose on time. And um, his clock goes to zero and his opponent claims on time. Uh, but uh, they hadn't agreed the time control. And in the Hearts League at the start of the game, both players have to agree. You know, are, are you playing the long game or the short game? Uh, so the long game is 35 with adjudication or German. Um, the short game is, um, you know, all moves in, in 80. And they hadn't actually agreed that at the start. So the default becomes the longer game. So uh, thankfully, um, Alex um, is able to play on. Uh, but I, it looks uh, uh, drawish at best at the moment. So um, it all hangs in the balance if we can draw the match. If we can draw the match, and then it, we have to depend on Watford one uh, dropping a half point. They've got two matches to go again. Thankfully, against strong, um, very relatively strong uh, teams in the league that have done well so far. So that they, we need them to, to to draw a match to give us a chance to win the league. And we haven't won this league since 1967, apparently. So that's that's why I feel, even though I won, I feel I feel quite gutted. Um, five board match, so much drama going on. It's like I couldn't really uh, interfere and tell uh, my my uh, fellow teammates, Rob, you know, don't lose on time, and then David, you know, accept the draw because Alex might be able to draw anyway. But no, I I couldn't um, offer free advice like that because, uh, and it's like I ended up losing two games after winning my game, in effect, in a way. So anyway. Please leave any comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.